Hello everyone, welcome to today's video in which we will be discussing an incredibly powerful method that will completely change the way you approach the generation of technical drawings. If you are involved in the manufacturing or design process of any product, from a piece of furniture to big scale buildings, then you know how tedious and time consuming it is to generate technical drawings. However, there is a solution that can completely automate this process save you countless of hours and reduce practically to zero the human error. We are talking about the Squid plugin for Grasshopper Shape Diver Edition, which allows you to generate PDF drawings in Grasshopper, but also in the cloud. In this video, we will provide you with the step-by-step -step process for you to use this plugin and how to take it to the next level by using Shape Diver. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and to like this video if you haven't done so, as that helps us with the YouTube algorithm. Now that out of the way, let's get started. We will divide this tutorial in three parts. First one, how to create drawings in Grasshopper. Second one, how to create PDF templates. And third one, how to take those drawings and put them inside these PDF templates. Before starting, let's have a look at the model that we will be using and what it is capable of. So we have just a simple bookcase, but this bookcase generates automatically this PDF that we see in the left side. So we have a PDF with three pages, one with a perspective view, the second one with elevations and a top view, and the last one we have a section plus a bill of materials. Let's change the parameters and let's see what happens. So as you can see in this last page, the model is also able to generate this detailed drawing of one of the drawers. As you can see, the model is also able to recognize which template is better to be used to fit the drawing. So in this case, it changed from a portrait into a landscape mode of an A4 page. As the model also has uh, the option to have shelves inside, then we are also showing these dotted lines so that we can clearly see what is happening in the inside of the bookcase. This will happen for the elevations. We have also an option to change the PDF page size, which means that now we went from A4 to A3. So of course the dimensions are smaller because the page is bigger. Um, but then the model is not just able to recognize what's better if to go in landscape mode or to go in portrait mode, but additionally, you can choose between whether you want your model to be in an A4 or, a, or in an A3 page. Then also the model contains this section of notes in which we can add, for example, information from the model, for example, in this case, handle type that we selected here in the top, handle style, then we have button right now, but we have three options, uh, then body material, doors materials and drawers materials, which is here as options, body wood type, and um, additionally, I can add extra notes that in this case could be information that is given by the client, uh, and we added also these extra notes here in the notes section. Finally, at the end, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have a bill of materials, which is, which is able to give us all what we need to be able to build this bookcase. So in the, for example, we have four 400 millimeters by 400 millimeters by 2000 millimeters of high rectangular profile columns. Or here at the end, we have that we need 16 shelf support pegs 
or that we need a, a board of 918 millimeters wide by 100 millimeters um, uh, high, 15 millimeters thick for the drawers fronts, for example. Now let's have a look at this same model, but in Shape Diver. Here in Shape Diver, we get exactly the same options in this section. So let's change them and let's have a look at the PDF. So here we have it, the bookcase that we just generated through Shape Diver is now here in PDF format with all of the details um, that I added to it, two drawers, each of them a hundred. Here we have the notes section with the note that I added. Here we have that I am the client in this example, all of the dimensions of the drawings, the bill of materials, the um, detail view of the drawer and other general information that gets automatically generated like the date, the scale of the model. Uh, here we just sum up the dimensions of the uh, bookcase to generate the project title. Plus we also added a logo. All of this we will be teaching how to do. So now that we know what the model is capable of doing, now we can dive in the Grasshopper model. This Grasshopper model is divided in two parts, the creation of the 3D model and the creation of the PDF. We will not explain the part of the creation of the 3D model because that's not the focus of this tutorial but the Grasshopper model will be down in the description so you can download it and explore it yourself. Um, in terms of the creation of the PDF, in this video we will cover just the first part, which is the creation of the uh, drawings. So we will isolate this part here and concentrate on it. To start, um, we need of course the 3D model and that we want um, to project into the PDF. and we need this component, which is the make 2 d component that is a native component from Grasshopper since uh, Rhino 7. That component, you can find it in the display section, dimensions, and here we have make 2 d component. I have a small example here uh, to be able to explain this component. So here we have some spheres, um, random spheres positioned. They are, um, here we have spheres as meshes and here are spheres as surfaces. Um, if we connect these spheres into the geometry, so that's the geometry input, the first one, and then we connect a view. A view is like from where I'm going to be looking at these spheres to generate my 2D drawing. That view is here. Then we will be able to create our 2D drawing. We just need to hit on compute. Then that will take a few seconds uh, to be able to compute and um, send us back the result. So here we have the spheres as curves. If we go to the 2B, we can see them, uh, which comes from these um, spheres that we have in 3D. So as you can see, here we use the perspective uh, view. So whatever we are looking at in the perspective is what our component will compute. In this case, that's done through this make to, make, make to the Rhino view that you can find in the dimension section, make to the Rhino view. I can write here perspective, or I can write here the name of any other viewport. In this case, you can see here is perspective, which is the one I'm using right now, but I could write top, front, right, and uh, will be the same um, method. However, um, as you can see, this component right now is taking 8.6 seconds, which is too long. You can make it way faster. And that's just by simply using meshes. So we have exactly the same amount of, the same amount of spheres. We have exactly um, the same radius in the spheres. But instead of using surfaces, we are going to use meshes. And if we click Compute, then we can see that instead of 8.8 uh, seconds is taking now just 1.7 seconds to compute. So that's the first tip. Use meshes instead of uh, surfaces or b wraps when you want to use the make to the component. The second thing is um, if you are going to use this make to the method through Shape Diver, 
you cannot use the Rhino view component because that requires of the Rhino viewports, which we cannot access through ShapeDiver. The only access that we have in ShapeDiver is of the ShapeDiver viewport. Therefore, we have other options, which is the Make to the Parallel Views and Make to the Perspective View. To be able to um, explain these ones, we will go back into our um, bookcase. So here we have um, our 3D model. And here we have this component which is from Pufferfish. And here you have it in Pufferfish, Curve section, and there is bounding rectangle. This bounding rectangle is what we need to be able to generate our um, our cameras from where we are going to be looking at the model. So if we look at the 3D model, we can see that one camera is looking in this um, direction. You can see here the rectangle. Um, another rectangle is looking at the model towards the front and another rectangle is looking at the model towards the side. Uh, that's done through the planes. So I just need to give it the different planes. Here we have a X, uh, Z plane, however, you will see that here the X is negative. I will explain that in a bit. Here we have a Y, Z plane. And finally, this is the plane that is not aligned with any axis, but uh, it has this angle, which is the one that generates the, is going to generate for us the perspective uh, view. Then we need to take this rectangle and give it a little bit of offset. So if I zoom in here, you will see the little bit of offset, that's just to make sure that the edges of the 3D model are also considered when uh, computing the, um, to the, uh, the 2D view. The same happens here, I move it a little bit away of the model, so you can see here uh, we go from offset and then we move it a little bit away from the model. So we also make sure again that everything that the model has is being taken into consideration, that the edges are not being left out. Um, then I separate here just the section that is for um, the, uh, the perspective view and the section that is for the um, orthographic view, so that is the front view and the side view. So to create the orthographic views, we already had the rectangles, we just need the make to the parallel view and uh, that creates our views. Uh, as you can see, we additionally can see now these arrows. These arrows are the ones that let us know uh, the orientation in which our drawing will be drawn. So in this case, we need to make sure that the, um, this arrow is always pointing up and this arrow is always pointing towards the model. Because that means I am looking at the model. If, it's, if this arrow is looking away from the model, then you will be drawing nothing because um, there is nothing in this side of the, of the camera. So you need to make sure that this arrow is always look, looking towards the model and that this arrow, the second one, is looking up. In that way, you make sure that um, the drawing is done correctly. That's why these planes, which generates our rectangles, are uh, very important to set them correctly. So in this case, when you saw that I did this minus one, it is the reason is that we make sure that the orientation of our cameras are uh, correct. The same here we have, for example, a minus one, the same situation. We need to make sure that the camera is oriented in the correct way, which these arrows allows us to know whether it is or not. On the other side, we have um, the other rectangle, the one of the perspective. So I take the plane of this rectangle, I take the point of this rectangle, and in this case, I just make this uh, point away from the rectangle. Um, so here you can see it. So it's a point uh, um, that is going in the normal of our plane. And that generates the point from which our perspective view will be created. So you can see here from this little um, icon how it is done basically. So we take this point, then this point goes towards the frame, which is the one that we have here. And that's how we have our um, perspective uh, views created. So if we click on the perspective view, you can clearly see what will be taken into consideration when creating this, um, this drawing. And again, we have our arrows pointing towards the model and our second arrow pointing up. So that gives us all of our views.
and that's how we will be generating our drawings which we will be checking in a bit so now that we know how the views uh, work let's continue checking the other um, inputs so here we have the clipping planes the clipping planes is used well in case you want to let's say create a section of um, of the model so for example let's say here i want to create um x x y section uh, sorry x z section so i want to cut my model i'm going to be looking at it in the perspective view but i'm going to cut it um in this uh, in this plane and i'm going to actually move it in the y axis and let's put zero is done 100 no, maybe more okay so we have our spheres and this is our clipping plane Let me move it more inside and I'm gonna put that into my clipping planes um, input and I'm gonna click again uh, compute but let me see how is my camera looking remember that here I'm going to use the Rhino view just for this example and then I click compute and now you can see here that our spheres now have these additional cures because they are being cut um, in this part that's exactly maybe here is not as clear but that's exactly what we are doing with this make 2d we're also creating some um, some planes to cut our model so if we check the 3d model <clears throat> the first two is just a uh, xy plane in looking to the negative that's just because we don't want to cut our actually the first two and the last one we don't want to cut these uh, drawings but we do we do want to cut the third drawing the third drawing is the section view that we saw in our pdf uh, when we were doing the demo so if we check here now the different views that we have If I so if I go so we have from view which comes from the front rectangle that we created here, then we have side view, and then we have the section view. So you can see through the 3D model. That's the one that we have here. This is cutting our model exactly in this plane now to make it even more clear let's add this section also in the perspective which the perspective is I think the last one yeah the last one is the perspective so what happens if we add this section also for the perspective so that will be the last one so as you can see here the model is also being cut and if I flip this plane so actually we are flipping it here but I'm gonna flip it again here so I'm gonna flip the plane so that instead of cutting the section that we cannot see so we cannot see this part in the perspective I want to see the other part so I just need to flip the plane and that will flip the cut as well so yes there we go so now we have our perspective view with a section of it um, yep, so that's basically what the clipping plane is used for to be able to cut through our uh, model and that's what we will see in our final result so now we have already our geometry explained we have already our clipping planes explained we have already our um, views explained remember rhino view, perspective view or parallel view which you can find here and um, these last ones are just simple toggles will, that you need to um, set to true or false of whether or not to compute tangent, tangent edges or uh, whether or not to compute tangent seams. So if you want this to be also computed and shown in your um, model, then you can set it to uh, true. Finally, something that is very important, especially if you're going to use this make to the InShape Diver, is to always right click on this model and set this to automatic 
What that means is that instead of having to, to click again and again this compute button that appeared here, the drawings will be always computed if any change is made. So if I click here automatic and then I change this to let's say 500, this is my clipping plane, then this is computed automatically and I don't have to click on the compute um, button that it was showing. The reason why this is important, especially if you're using InShape Diver, is because of course in Shape Diver you cannot access directly the Grasshopper model, so you cannot click in the in the component. So you need to make it automatic. However, the way you can control whether this component gets computed or not, because anyways you don't want it to be computing all the time, otherwise it takes too much time. You can see here is 1.3 seconds using the mesh, otherwise it will take eight seconds. And for example here, because we are computing several views at the same time, so all the views that we saw here, so three, four views we are computing here at the same time, so this takes 5.9 seconds. You don't want that to be computing all the time. So you can use instead a filter, and then this filter you can combine it with a toggle, toggle, boolean toggle. And in that way, you can either send or not the geometry to the Make 2D so that it gets computed. That's basically what we saw in the demo where we have this export PDF uh, toggle, which makes sure that this um, Make 2D uh, gets uh, the geometry or not, but also a lot of other things get turned off while we are um, editing the model because we just want to um, we just want to compute all of this information for the PDF just at the end when we are ready. So that's just by setting some filters. Here you can see the same. So we have this 3D model, we have this filter, and none of these will be computed if our um, export PDF is set to false. So if I invert this, you can see all of this uh, gets turned off, and then now we have um, no computation here happening, which means we are saving time uh, when changing our model to other configuration. So that's the make to the component. However, if you can avoid this component, if you are able to avoid it, that's even better. Because this component, as you can see, takes time to compute. If you have an even more complicated model with even way more objects, you can optimize it as much as possible. So your meshes should be as low poly as possible. But ideally, you could create these drawings from scratch. Maybe the perspective one, no. So for example, this one, these ones are pretty much just rectangles. So you could potentially create it from scratch. This is just a rectangle, another rectangle, this is just a polyline, etc. For example, in this case, the basic, the most basic and fast one that you can create from scratch is the top view. So here I'm creating the top view from scratch without using make 2D. Why? Because, be, why? because even if we check it here, you can see it's just the rectangles of our columns plus the rectangle of our body, which is exactly what I have here. The rectangles of our uh, columns, which even come from the creation of the model. Here we create uh, the, um, the uh, here we create the boxes for our columns, and additionally, you, I use the same values to be able to create the rectangles for our um, to the drawing. Um, here, for example, I'm just not considering adding the handles in the top view, which is something that you need to decide uh, depending on which product you are working on, whether that's really necessary to have. In this case, I decided that it's not really necessary to have, that it is enough by seeing it in the other views. So if I, if I am able to see the handles in the um, front view, in the side view, in the uh, perspective view, then if I don't see it in the top view, it's okay. I could also potentially draw them from scratch, but it's not a problem. So if you can avoid this and create any drawing from scratch, that will save you a lot of computation time. Now let's have a look at the outputs of this component. So the first output is um, the curves itself, but the visible curves. That's what we just saw here. So these are our, these are our visible curves because we also get our hidden curves. So if I connect, these are our hidden curves, this uh, output here, 
if I connect this one here to be able to see one by one, this is all what is behind all the geometry that we see to start with. So if we go to the zero, you can see all what is behind is there, all what is behind, all what is behind, etc. So that's our hidden um, curves. Then we have here um, the drawings object index, which is basically here we have um, 25 meshes. So 25 meshes go inside our made 2D component. And uh, as an output here, we also get the index of the object from which these curves belong. So what are we doing with it, for example, in this case? So I take in this example our section. So I know that my section is the second branch of my tree. And I take here the object index of uh, the second branch as well. Now, I, I know, because I know the order of my meshes, I know that I can get from here just the um, just the drawer, which is the, what we are gonna extract to be able to create the um, the detail of our drawings. So in this case, I know that the drawers are the index 19 and 21. Why again? Because I know in which order I connected, in which order I merged my meshes here. So I know that first I merged the body, second I merged the doors, third I merged I Third, I merge the drawers. So that's exactly uh, what I need to uh, figure out, what is the index of, that I need to be able to extract. So I know that I have 15 branch, 15 uh, in, so I know that I have 15 objects in one branch, two objects, two objects, two objects, etc. I just do a simple calculation here and I, and I end up with 19 and 21. So if I check here, now, from this entire drawing, I am extracting just exactly this particular drawing. And with anything else, inside any of our uh, other views, front view, side view, etc., I could also pick exactly the uh, specific um, curves that I want. So, something similar we do also here, but with the hidden curves. So the hidden curves, we get exactly the same. So we already saw that we have hidden here, but additionally, we also have the hidden object index. So in this case, um, I'm going to get the hidden curves of uh, all the branches 0, 1, and 3. So 0, 1, and 3 will be front view, 1 will be uh, side view, and 3 will be perspective view. And from these ones, I'm going to get just the shelves. So in this case, I know that I have six shelves. and Again, because of the order that I have uh, um, joined all of my meshes into a single um, list, here is where I have all my meshes into a single list, into a single data tree in this case, I know that the first thing that I merge here, the first thing that comes here are my, um, are my shelves. So that's why here I just need the first six indexes. So from zero to five. And as you can see here, that's what we extract here. So we get here just the hidden curves of the shelves. Again, just I can just exactly pick the objects that I want from this, um, from this make to d component. Um, then that's what we will be using to create these dotted lines that you saw in the demo, where you could see behind the dotted lines of the uh, shelves. Finally, in the outputs, we have the visible type. Um, in this case, if we check, what do we get there? We get here we, the type of curve that was extracted um, from uh, the model. So for each curve that we get, we get um, a type. So we have 343 uh, types and here we have 343 indexes. The same, we have 343 curves. What is this useful for? Here we are going to use it in this section as well because um, from, this, uh, from this particular um, drawer, which we extracted through the index, we just want to get the section curves. So let's have a look here. 
we come here, we have our drawer, we have here our um, drawer types, so uh, you can see there section, section and tangent, and a scale that we will check in another uh, video. So if we go inside this cluster, you can see, okay, from all of these types that I have, I'm going to select just the section. So that's how we go from this to just this. Let's have a look at another example, which is more obvious. Here we have it. So we have all the drawings. We select just the drawing number two, which is the section, the entire section. And we select the curve types of just number two as well. So in this case, we have 53 types, 53, yeah, uh, types in this list. Again, we are doing the same. We are taking just the section. So with this, this is the member index component. Um, I'm looking in this list for the section uh, types that gives me all the indexes. And that's how I go from all of this to just the section queues. And why would I want that? In this case is because we want to create uh, we want to create a hatch, a hatch that is very common uh, to be used in uh, technical drawings. So um, in this case, the first thing that we need to make sure is that the cures that we get are closed. So that's why I use this closed cure component and I also use this um, surface component and this um, surface split one. So basically we go from these cures, which not all are closed, to these ones which are closed. Um, why? Because we need a closed area to be able to apply the hatch. The hatch is this uh, component that is uh, from fav tools. So we have fav tools, annotations, and here we have hatch. As an input, we require closed cures, which are the ones that we just computed. We required a hatch pattern. In this case, is the hatches that uh, are in your document. So you, yeah, you need to get the list. In this case, uh, we can just put a value list. And this will give us all the hatches that are available. So there are a lot of hatches available uh, in our document. And here we can see this is solid. Let's have a look at hatch three. This is this one, hatch two. So you have plenty of um, options. In this case, it is looking for the index, not the name. So in this case, I want the index number one, which is hatch number one. And uh, finally, rotation. This was 45 degrees, otherwise the slides will be straight down and the uh, size, so how how big is going to be my hatch, how uh, the pattern in between each curve that we have, how how much space is going to be in between. Now this is going to give us just a hatch type, hatch type, rhino and geometry hatch type. You, we cannot do much uh, with it unless we're going to export it in other formats, but if we want to really put this into our PDF, we need to then use this component. This component is from the human plugin, so if we go to human, uh, we have here reference and hatch explode. Um, you need to make sure to right click this component and calculate exploded geometry. This component will basically take this hatch and convert it into real curves. All of these now are uh, lines that we can use to then draw into our PDF. So something to consider about this hatch is that if you want to use that in a shape diver, there is one thing that the Rhino document has that is that you need to initialize the hatches. The hatches don't get initialized. So all these hatch types that you have, that you saw, they don't get initialized automatically when you just open the Rhino um, um, software. To be able to initialize that, for now, you need to use this uh, C sharp that you have, uh, that we have here. The C sharp makes sure that all the hatches that are in the Rhino document get initialized. Um, if you need to get this C-sharp, again, this Grasshopper model will be down in the description. And that's all for today. In today's tutorial, we focus on the creation of the 2D drawings um, by using the Make2D component, which will be eventually added to the PDF. In the next video tutorial, 
we will focus on the creation of the template, so that means creation of this page, and on the uh, margins, these blocks, uh, text blocks, where our drawing will be eventually be placed. So we hope that this video inspire you to get started with the first steps to be able to automate the creation of your technical drawings so you can focus on what really matters, which is to bring your ideas to life. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your colleagues and friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our next section. And I will see you in the next one.